crazy scenes down at Ewa Park as not only did Blackburn Rovers pick up their fourth win on the spin, but no, the big bad boy Brereton smashes home his first goal in the blue and white halves, and we'll talk about it next. <laughs> That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time, looking back at Blackburn Rovers' match up against Bolton at Ewood Park. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you are new to the channel, smash your subscribe button. Keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related. Championship right? Whoa, football right? We're going to all here under one roof. And uh, silence! That's right, got some, some special announcements, boys and girls. Because uh, not only do I have one, but I have actually two new Patreons, that's right, boys and girls. So welcome to the club. So a big, big shout out to Ben Hayward, who became numero uno in the old Patreon ranks uh, and joined uh, the bandwagon. Who started off a nice little uh, trickle over the weekend, and then joining him, the legend that is John Spurn. That's right. Both of those two uh, are dear, near and dear to my heart. Obviously, contributing to the club in the old Patreon. If you feel that you want to join the gang, uh, like these two lovely gentlemen, Ben Hayward once again, John. Spurn, Burn, uh, who are helping me continue this journey of creating content, supporting me in 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 a, in a way I didn't actually feel uh, honoured enough. So I do I do appreciate any any support whatsoever. And you boys are legends, legends in my eyes. Uh, links to my Patreon is in your description down below if you want to check it out. But anyway, let's talk about it in a bit more detail. It does kick off, or it did kick off over at Ewa Park and Rovers putting on a display once again in the penultimate. Uh, home game for Rovers this season. Uh, 14,495 people were in attendance to catch Big Bad Boy Brereton open up the scoring on the 30th minute. And not only did those boys catch it live in Ewood Park, there was a few of us live on Twitch who did catch that match. And we did see the goal. If you want to relive my own celebrations, they are on the Twitchosphere. That's right. Head over there. There is a, You can catch a whole replay of the old Twitchosphere stream. All two hours and 20 odd minutes of the sucker uh, live on Twitch. But yes, it was, it was a bit of a bland game, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, it was good to see Big Bad Boy Brereton break the hoodoo and maybe just maybe he'll get a couple more goals uh, before the season comes to a close. Um, but but for me, yeah, I think I think what really impressed me the most today was our defence. Williams and Lenehan are just they're just getting better and better. A clean sheet for them today, also a clean sheet for the Canadian, the Flatmeister, the Lautweiler in the back of the net. Uh, to be honest with you, it he was just lucky that Williams and Lenehan were on their game today because we're, we're, if if it was Mulgrew and maybe. Uh, the Williams of old, or just the defensive of old, uh, it could have been. It could have been a two-two game at least. Uh, but Rovers, you know, I think I think we're in complete control throughout the game. If you look at the stats down here, it is seems to be a one-sided affair. Fifteen shots for Rovers, thirteen for Bolton. As a possession, we had pretty much sixty percent of the ball throughout the day. Eighty-six percent of our passes reached the intended target. Uh, they did have more dribbles. Uh, they did win more of the aerial battles, uh, but we were more hefty with the tackles on the ground. Uh, and we also had more corners to them, three to two. Anyways, take a look. Look at those beautiful starting 11s. David Raya was not there. It was Lautweiler, the Canadian, the Mountie between the sticks. Amari Bell, Williams, Lenahan, and Nyambe. Alongside Lewis, Travis, Dak, Rothwell, Armstrong. And of course, uh, Big Bad Boy Burton justified his start. And with a goal, and it was a confidence-boosting goal. He looked he looked like a man who's been scoring goals all season. The, 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 the swagger. He put that ball in the back of there. Wait till the highlights pop up on YouTube. They're going to be absolute beauty. He looked... Good. And if we can get more of this next season, you never know. We might get a double-digit man. Uh, and he's just, he is going to get better and better and better. And, and there was has been some signs. And, you know, you have to give the lad a bit of credit. Uh, he's been up against the fans since he got here. He didn't ask for that £7 million price tag. Y you know what? If, if people's attitude uh, remains or continues to do that, we're going to have another Kevin Davies on our hands. He'll be a complete... A turkey for us here, and then he'll kick on and move on to another club, and then he'll be phenomenal when he'll be scoring goals against us and eventually playing for England. So let's give the boy a bit of breathing space. Let's let's see him develop next season, and you never know, we might have a bit of a troublemaker on our hands. As for my match ratings, well, here you go. The, the Flatmeister got six, uh, Bell got a six, Williams got an eight. He got who's my man of the match? Uh, big shout out to Daryl Lennon once again, L Skipper. For the afternoon. Uh, Nyambi with a five. Didn't really see much of him to be honest with you. Travis with sixes. Travis was removed at half time. Um, uh, we had Daki Boy with a seven. Rothwell with a seven. Armstrong with a seven. And I'm going to give Big Bad Boy Ben an eight out of ten. As for uh, Bolton. Well. 
Yes, this was their starting line. Oh, look, between Sticks, Taylor, Beavers, Hobbs, and Brockbank, I think. Noon, Connolly, and Connell, Williams, Amiobi, and Donaldson up front. I'll tell you what, those, those two snappers there that are completely out of whack compared to the other photos. The one in the middle, the Irish fella, uh, Connell, he is, a, he is a player. I think uh, 17 years of, years of age. Definitely, definitely one for one for the future. He's got a he's got a bit he's he's got a bit of a, a good pass on him, and uh, hopefully, you never know, we might be able to prize him away from uh, from uh, Burden Park or wherever they play this thing. Macron, right from the Macron, because he is a tidy little player, um, and he should rip up League One next season uh, under Bolton. Anyway, let's take a look at some more stats for you. Uh, we had, did have more touches, uh, 751 to their 538, and that also included far, uh, more passes, 580 to their 376. Uh, we had more clearances to them. Uh, they had more interceptions. They lost possession more than we did, 25 to our 24. Down the bottom there, you can see just about where on, on the field uh, the shots took place. And as you can see on the graph, up, or the map up top, uh, a couple of long-range efforts from Bolton. Um, yeah, and Rovers did pepper them. Did pepper them to a certain point. Uh, as for shots on target, well, uh, we got uh, with six of them, uh, two of them in the back of the net. And four straight down the goalkeeper's throat. As for Bolton, they had four of them. And Lautweiler picked up all of them, which is nice to see. Uh, quick look at the heat maps. If you're a heat map man just like me, uh, obviously, in Rovers half... Yeah, the ball seemed to be in there for the huge majority of it. I guess that's a lot to do with our build-up play. Um, it was very stop-starty, stop-starty. There was there was no real fl fluidity to the game, um, which kind of sucked a little bit, especially when, when I'm live on Twitch trying to give a kind of play-by-play -play action. There was a lot of stagnant moments that uh, I was trying to... Uh, to create some drama and uh, there, there was it was failing on deaf ears but uh, yeah it was a good positive result for Rovers and it makes it four wins on the spin wait till we do the old match preview for the for the Norwich game and we have a look at the form table because boy oh boy what a difference a couple weeks makes we were rock bottom uh, in the month of March now as we end towards the back end of April we are uh, flying high in the old form table but anyway what else went on this uh, good Monday Easter Monday um, in the old championship. Aston Villa picked up a 1-0 win over Millwall. Sheffield Wednesday dented Bristol City's hopes of playoffs with a 2-0 win. Derby County left it late, 2-0 late. Two late goals for them to keep up their uh, 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 playoff hopes. Wigan 2-0 victors over a 10-man Preston and that probably secured themselves um, some championship football next season. Rotherham, they lost to Birmingham. Strange scenes over at uh, at uh, the New York Stadium as as there was, I think there was a pitch invader and then after the match, I think I think uh, the, the the culprit got arrested, and one of the Birmingham players went to go see him. That's over on uh, social media. Obviously, the game of the day was a Ewood Park uh, two 0 Rovers victory over Bolton. Ipswich, uh, obviously already doomed, joining Bolton next season in League One. They lost to Swansea. Uh, they are they are final opponents at Ewood Park Forest. I put three past Middlesbrough Hull, lost against Sheffield United, who kept up the pressure with Norwich for possibly pipping them to the title at the end of the day. Reading held up uh, with a nil nil draw, and probably secured their safety as well. Brentford two 0 winners over. Leads in the shock of the day. Anyway, let's take a look at the table now. This is what it looks like at the tip of the top of the table. Norwich are three, just three points clear off Sheffield United. Six on the table, folks. Uh, Sheffield United in second, 85 points. Leeds are in third. They have it all to flip and do. Um, it, it's, it's mathematically still on the cards that Norwich have to wait um, till the conclusion of the game against Blackburn on Saturday to seal the deal and get promoted. Um, because Norwich, you know, they, they would need to win both their games. They would need Norwich to slip up or lose both games uh, for, order for in order for them to get uh, promotion. And then they would need to have a 10-goal swing in that. And so, realistically, Norwich fans should be celebrating, but there is still a minute chance that they might bottle it. Uh, so maybe just maybe Rovers can get the better of them uh, at Carrow Road, despite and, and, and still celebrate afterwards. Uh, so Leeds are in third. Uh, and, and yeah, it does look, it does. They've got, I think they've got to take on Villa next week, who are on form. Sheffield United take on Ipswich. It looks like it's a done deal. Um, but you never know. You know Ipswich might be, become party poopers and, and, and cause a right old spanner in the works. We'll have to wait and see. West Brom are in fourth, Villa are in fifth. Uh, Derby are in sixth spot. Uh, Middlesbrough are looking like the unluckiest team in football at the moment. It's seventh spot on goal difference. Uh, as Derby pip them with those two late goals. Bristol City, oh, they're going to have to they're going to have to dig deep in the last couple of games. I think it'll surprise everybody. As for the bottom end of the table, Ipswich are doomed. Bolton are doomed. Uh, Rotherham are in twenty uh, second spot, forty points on the board. Again, six points on the table. Reading look mathematically 
secure. They do have a superior goal difference. So it's realistic between Millwall and Rotherham. And if I was... Uh, it looks like Millwall. Have, they've got a game in hand as well. So let me see this. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a tough old slog. If Millwall get a point or more, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure they're going to be safe. Ah, so Rovers, we're in 14 for the table, 59 points on the board. The gaffer wants us to get to 60. So he's got a chance here to... He's got two attempts to get to the 60-point mark. Um, and then next our opponents will be it will be Norwich at uh, Carroll Road. That's the late kickoff on Saturday, 2:30 p.m. over uh, over here in the U.S., where that means it must be a 7:30 kickoff um, for the U.K. fans. Anyway, let's take a look at what else is going on this weekend. Coming up, Mill will take on Stoke in the early game. Uh, there must be, I think, Mill might be uh, in action midweek as well. Bolton take on Brentford. That's what they're already doing. Brentford, obviously, party poopers for Leeds. West Brom took uh, will take on Rotherham. Um, as West Brom look to secure playoffs, Rotherham look to secure their safety. Swansea City will take on Hull. A uh, bit of a meaningless, meaningless game, that one. QPR will take on Forest again. Pretty meaningless. Middlesbrough against Reading. I think Middlesbrough need to win that one. Birmingham against Wigan. They're both safe. Preston against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, Sheffield Wednesday, do they have any outside aspirations of playoffs? They have, a, they, have a, they have a small chance. They have a small chance. Bristol City, uh, they take on Derby. That's a big one, that one. Sheffield United up against Ipswich. We talked about that. Leeds against Villa. Of course, the game of the day is at Caro Road. Now you heard a little bit what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaffer have to say after the match at Ewood Park? Here's Mr Mowbray. Um, OK. Um, I think they made it difficult at times. They got a lot of men behind the ball, sort of a bit deep. You know, so much different from QPR where there was a bit of space to play and... Um, so a, a bit frustrating at times, but 2-0, we'll take that, we'll move on to the next game. Disappointed we didn't score a few more, delighted with the clean sheet. Delighted that some young players got an opportunity on the grass in front of a you know, decent crowd today. Um, so yeah, OK, we'll take the points and move on. Um, listen, I, I don't have to defend Ben, I think, you know, I've said all along, he, he really enjoys his football club, I think. I know he hasn't had the minutes that he wants, and yet... I genuinely feel when Dak and Graham have scored whatever they've got now, 16 and 17 or something like that each, it's the, I'm a bit wary when we required the results to break that up. So um, he has to be patient. I think um, see him every day in training, score goals like that, and, and I've got no fears for him. He's a very talented young guy, and but he is very, very young. You know, as I said before, he is. If you think how young Adam Armstrong is, and Brent's probably two years younger than him, it's um, just because he's a bit taller and a bit. You know, at six foot one or whatever he is, um, but he's just a young boy working hard, joining in with the the spirit of our football club, and, and I hope that he can um, push on now and you know and start the next season. Of course, he has to be right in there to try and start as many games as he can. Since we've got some key players fit again, I think I, I don't think I ever wavered from the fact that I think we were playing pretty well, even though we were losing games or drawing games. It. Um, you think of the four one nil defeats here. Um, we were in all of them games. You know, Millers' first half was disappointing. I think we didn't really function. But uh, with ten men, second half we competed. But Bristol, Preston, whoever the other one was, we lost one nil. You know, we we were really competitive. I think the away games. How we didn't win at Reading, at Rotherham, we just didn't deal with long balls in the box. Sheffield Wednesday, we had a team of kids playing. It was. You know, I can look at them and think, you know what? They worked really hard. They were all still really giving everything they've got. I talked about Lenahan coming back, you know, he actually heads the ball back over the halfway line and uh, it just makes a massive difference. We're not having to defend the edge of our box every goal kick. It's it's um it just helps massively and something as basic as that is very, very important to a football team. I think we've got a bit of confidence, we're moving the ball around the pitch and um trying to probe and ask questions of the opposition. You know, at times and I think rightly so at times over the last two years we've been a bit one dimensional into Graham and down to Dak I think as I've said to you we, if we're going to be a really good football team in this league we have to be able to play more than one way and, and that's what we've been working hard on and um, and I think the fruits are there particularly at QPR and Forest. I think we give them lots of problems today it was a bit more difficult because we can against a team who sat really deep and you know, denied us space in their half at times um, yeah, the team are growing. The, 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 we have some very talented young footballers who want to get better and want to learn, and and uh, we're looking forward to the next season. Yeah, I think so. Listen, Lenahan's really high quality footballer, you know, high quality individual, and I think um, he deserves to wear the captain's armband today. Um, 
I just hope you know we can progress the club fast enough so that players of Lenahan's quality aren't taken away from us by huge huge bids and from the Premier League. It's uh, we have to recruit well in the summer if we can and so that the likes of Dara and Daki think you know what this is a really decent team and we've got a chance this year and so and they don't they're not thinking their agents aren't thinking of moving them on they're thinking of you know what I'm looking forward to next season with these good players we've signed and this decent team we've got and um, that's what we hope to do look to be honest I just put the team up and then let them get on with it really I think sometimes you don't go looking for a fight it's um, they'll deal with it I've been telling them all year that it's coming so um, they know Managers can only pick 11 footballers, and uh, I've been telling, leaving messages in the media recently over about young players who are going to play, and so there's, the lads who didn't make the 18, they have to deal with it. It's football, they um, they have to work hard in training and try and be on the team sheet next weekend. Now, what about what's going on on social media? Let's take a little look. Some of the some of the tweets out there. Blackburn Rovers Island, or uh, at Island Rovers, said this. Uh, Clean sheet, goal for Brereton, goal for Armstrong, debut for Danny Buttyworth, debut for John Buckley and Darrell Lennon as El Capitano. Blackburn Rovers 2, Bolton Wanderers nil. Not too shabby, Rovers. Meanwhile, in response to Elliot Bennett's tweet, uh, Ewa Park in the sunshine, four wins on the bounce, buzzing for Big Bears on his first goal for the club and great to see Bucko and Butts get some minutes today. Great end to Easter weekend. Indeed, Bennett, as for uh, the response to that by the Rovers fans, Blackburn's Benno buzzing because Big Bears back over butts become brilliant by beating Bolton. Uh, a lot of bees there. And of course, Blackburn Rovers will stick that in there. Danny Butterworth said this. Proud moment today making my championship debut. Good team performance to get the three points. Well done. He did look he did look a bit of a player as well when he came on. As for talk of Ewood, they said this. Four wins on the bounce. Brereton, clinical finish. Clean sheet. Five academy appearances. Uh, salt in Bolton's wounds. Successful day. As a nice little picture of the boys celebrating with big bad boy Brereton. Ian Herbert said this. I've now seen Grabby, Davies and Brereton score. So that's, uh, that's a collector's item that's probably that's probably bingo uh as for mike the he said this on a serious note uh, regards Burton post goal his body language has perked up confidence is confidence is great beast when you can tame it as for jen bellamy she 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 was very explicit uh, and she said get the mcbuggery in there, she says, hashtag as it happened, hashtag Rovers. As for Russell Prescott, he said this, start the move, finish the move, been on his game right from the off, proved the doubt was wrong. And that is Ben, hashtag Rovers. And then another Twitter account has Brereton scored, aka at Big Ben Updates. And a big fat yes for, for him as he finally breaks his duck. As for Linz Lewis, she said this, today belongs to this man. There's a picture of big bad boy Brereton there. The first of his many goals at senior level for Rovers. So, so pleased for him. He's faced the criticism with a smile, worked hard and today been rewarded. Happy birthday, big bad boy Brereton. Uh, one and all. Here's to many, many goals. Tops off for Brero. As for a Rovers tweet, they said, he's done it. And the New York uh, City Rovers also said, Betty Boy. So that pretty much wraps up this sucker, my friends. Uh, and like I said, a uh, big thank you to all the all the viewers that turned out for the old Twitchosphere live instant reaction as and as and when it took place. I'll be hoping to do more of those if you want to check out the old the whole coverage, all two hours of it. If you want to, if you want to, if you've got a, a boring a boring hour or two, uh, you can spend them over on Twitch and you can catch it all if you want to. It all the glows and glory, uh, and hopefully we'll do some of it, some more of those in the new season. I won't be doing any more this season because it's it's season's coming to a close. The the kickoff times are a bit weird, uh, and they're not gonna they're not gonna line up. The 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 stars are not gonna align for those to to take place. But I will be on Twitch for some other things over the over the summer, so make sure you check it out. Link to the old Twitch in there. And again, big shout out to the Patreons, uh, John Spurn and Ben Haywood. Well done uh, signing up and supporting me. If you also feel like you want to jump in and join the the exclusive VIP club, there is a link to the old Patreon in the old description. And again, uh, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit. The You'll subscribe, smash your thumbs up. It does wonders for the old algorithm. And again, we'll be back with the match preview for Norwich City right around the corner. Could we be party poopers for them? Could we beat them and they still celebrate? That's what I'd like to see. Uh, we'll have that. And I've already lined up. We will have a, a chat with Norwich City fan um, who is very, very excited. Uh, well, I'm actually lining that up for tomorrow. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the thumbs up. If you do, smash the subscribe. I'll be back in uh, same time, same place tomorrow for some more goodness. Until then, thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, 
football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>